All right, I got a little video here for a couple guys that had some questions on a couple tools I have. And uh, I'll show you what's going on here. I had a question on my light setup here. And of course the camera is gonna hate this because it's gonna have trouble with it. But those are basically three four bulb shop lights um, or in ceiling fluorescent fixtures. These are not high output fixtures. These are old, they were taken out of a building and. Uh, for salvage and they were given to me um, they've got the little plastic reflective sconces on it which kind of mask some of the light coming out of them but I keep them on there so that I don't hit them with a broom handle or break a bulb and have glass everywhere that's basically all it is and the way I built it this is a homemade job there is a frame underneath and here's the front if you can imagine it is I believe I use three quarter inch uh, black pipe. It's shaped in an A. So there's a crossbar there that makes the cross in the A. And then it comes through to the back, but it doesn't come to a point. There's a piece of angle iron welded across that, that that front part of the A is welded to. And then you have another one piece of pipe on each side to support that. So that basically, because I have a light hanging on the top here to get that certain angle, I have the legs way out in front so it can't flop over this way because that's the way the, the pull is going to be. But basically it's all made out of pipe. Um, off that angle iron on the back are the supports for the lights. So there's two pieces of black pipe that run all the way up. And then some eighth inch angle iron. It goes across the top of that with some more angle iron to hold that top light. It's all just kind of welded and scabbed together. The lights have self-tapping screws in them with large diameter fender washers on the sheet metal of the light inside and that's what holds them to this. This is pretty much cobbled together but it does a fantastic job. Um, to keep my spacing on the pipes, I welded a piece of eighth inch flat bar it's probably eighth by two or inch and a half, yeah, inch and a half. Um, it was whatever I had laying around, you know. You do with what you got. Uh, another piece of pipe. I didn't notch these pipes to weld them together. I just butted them up against one another, or put a square on them and tacked them and then buzzed them together. I had some re-rod or reinforcing bar for pouring concrete laying around and that's the support that goes on the back side to the leg and the same thing on the other side here okay and I welded on the bottom of the pipe a little piece of that flat stock and drilled a hole in it for a caster wheel these are all hand-me-down caster wheels you can buy them at Harbor Freight uh, yard sale uh, you might have something laying around whatever you got but I have fully swiveling wheels so they can all go 360 there's no stationary wheels on this they all swivel same thing on that side. These are a double wheel. It's just what I had. You don't have to use those kind. Front ones are singles because that's what I had. Again, piece of flat bar stock welded to the bottom of that pipe with a hole drilled in it. The bolt for the caster comes through and it's tack welded on there. I didn't even make it so you could take it apart. I haven't painted it. It's rusty. It looks like garbage, but it does, this, does serve a purpose. And all I did for the wiring is I put a cable clamp in the outlet of each one of the backs of the lights and ran Romex. This is 14-2 Romex. Okay. And just wired them together. And then in the bottom one is where I made my junction to put an electrical, grounded electrical cord in. And you can see where we're standing here. It's plugged in behind the drill press. There's probably 20 or 25 feet of cord on this. Um, I don't need any more than that or I'd trip over it or plug it into an extension cord. So there's the light. I have had several people ask me about it. That's how that's made. The other thing, I get lots of questions. Lots and lots of questions. On what everybody likes to call my dent pulling machine. Well, this is what it is. This company has been bought out. They are now a 
AIG Manufacturing or AIM Manufacturing. AIM. Uh, look them up on Google. But they still make this. It's called the Panel Beater. This is the Model 1000. I think this was probably a medium sized machine or a smaller machine when they were selling it. Um, it like I said, it's called something different now. It's the Model 1000D for Deluxe. I don't know what Deluxe means. Now basically, it has a 12 volt deep cycle battery in it now. You could have a 12 volt, like a Group 31 size truck battery. It's a big battery. It's as wide as that. You need a lot of amperage to, for this machine to work properly. It's got a timer on it. And basically what this timer does is it uh, it limits how long that the uh, the machine works. I'm about to lose my battery, so I'm going to change batteries for you guys. Hang on one second. Okay, I'm not sure where I left off, but we got a fresh battery in the camera here. So basically this timer is a potentiometer that works on time. Um, probably also works on current as to when it gets to a certain amount of heat or current flow it breaks the circuit. Now inside here is a very very large contactor. Um, looks like an automotive starter solenoid but it's huge. It's probably it's every bit as big around as that circle so it's probably three inches by six inches tall and uh, you can hear it when I engage this, if I can get it unstuck from the ground. Okay. It's very, very large. And that is what gives you your current. Now, it's got basically a battery charger here. Um, it comes with the unit. It's just a 12-volt charger. You can leave it plugged in all the time. And the battery charger, I don't know if this one is messed up, but the battery charger in and of itself, if you've got a bad battery in the unit, it will not run the unit. Um, also, if you have a bad battery and, like, I'll put my big... This is a roll-around charger. It's got the jump start feature. It's 500 amps. The fact that you have a bad battery in there, that will not overcome it. It needs the power of the battery in addition to the charger. It's basically on a big roll around cart. It's got caster wheels on the front and on the back here it's just got a regular type uh, you know, lawnmower type wheel would work from a push mower or something like that if you were building one. But um, they put posts in the back so you can connect the battery to the charger. Okay. Um, I leave it unplugged from the charger just so it doesn't discharge it. I don't know if that's true, if that really happens. The other thing with these, you don't use a maintenance free battery with them. You use one that you can add water or add, I'm sorry, add acid to uh, over time because the heat generated by this machine, it will boil them off and you need to constantly check them. If you use a maintenance free battery, you will most likely kill it. I'm not sure of that because I've never built one. but let's see what else I want to tell you about this so basically here's the electrode okay uh, it's got a small wire that runs down to the timer and that's what engages the solenoid to give you your power it's got an electrode pin on it and I want to say this is probably some sort of copper alloy um, kind of like a stud pin for a unispotter but when this welds to something you can actually give the whole unit a twist and it'll break loose um, you have your ground clamp here some pretty heavy gauge battery cable I'd say that's probably one aught or two aught it's pretty heavy and it's got a uh, copper or brass whatever this slug is in the middle it'll conduct electricity but it won't weld itself to there you can see I have metal filings all over this from dragging it around but uh, 
the magnet holds this up against your workpiece. You could probably use a regular clamp if you had something, a spot to clamp it to, that would be fine. But uh, on the handle here, this is the shrinking tip. So this is also hooked to the power. Okay, so here's your power lug right here coming in. You can see it's behind the nut. And the handle is aluminum, this part right here, but it still will get warm. This is just nothing more than a momentary switch. And this is the shrinking tip. Now this can also be used, you could put a stud pin in here, and if you have a slide hammer that will work with stud pins, you can use that. I basically use this, for the most part, with a leveler type handle that I made. Um, looking at videos of this machine being used, I constructed this. Basically two pieces of eighth inch flat bar and spaced apart so that you guys can see that the handle will go through it and when, as, after you weld it then you raise up on it and it will actually pull that pin and draw it away from a vehicle. I'll show more when I use it later this week. But that's just kind of an overview of how this works. Again, I've had several people asking about it. And I have another video, but you know, sometimes older videos aren't that easy to figure out where they're at. Sometimes you really gotta dig, so uh, myself included. But you can always go to my channel and type in certain things like that and it will find the video for you. I know a lot of us forget about that. I do too but it's all in how you label your videos and sometimes if this wasn't the name of the video or it wasn't one of the tags it makes it hard to find so that's it in a nutshell for the panel beater and the light I hope that helps the couple of folks that were wondering about that kind of thing um, that's probably about it if I think of something else I'll uh, I'll come back and let you guys know but other than that take care